Welcome back to Transport Phenomena on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, in this video, we're gonna do another example relating to flux and so forth, but we're gonna do this graphically, and then we're gonna do another example like this in the next video. Now, I wanna explain a few things to you. So this is a graph um, that I actually generated, and let's suppose it represents the concentration in a solution as a function of position. This is a really wacky function, but it's good for illustrating this purpose, all right? Let's introduce another concept called Fick's first law. So Fick is a scientist, Adolf Fick, and he has two laws of diffusion. His second law is a lot more complicated, and we're gonna cover that in later videos, but his first law is relatively simple. It really just says in layman's terms that molecules always diffuse or net flux occurs from an area of high concentration to low concentration, okay? So in the previous example, when we dealt with sucrose, if I have one area that has high sucrose concentration and another area that has low sucrose concentration, the net flux will occur from the area of high concentration of sucrose to low concentration of sucrose. In fact, really when you are in some kind of biology course or biochemistry and you're talking about passive diffusion, passive diffusion literally is a biological reiteration of Fick's first law of diffusion, okay? Now, in conceptual terms, it's really simple. Diffusion occurs, or flux, we would say, occurs from an area of high concentration to low concentration. However, when we start talking about this graphically, we have to look at it in a little bit different way. All right, so let's think about different points on the graph, all right? Let's take, for example, this point right up here. That's the highest point on the graph that I have illustrated, all right? So I would say that that is the highest concentration, right? It's the highest vertical component, so this is the highest concentration. Then let's go maybe right here to this minimum right here, this local minimum. This is a very low point on the graph, and so I would say that that is low concentration, all right? Now, if I talk about particles here, versus here in space, which direction will the particles move? Will they move basically to the right, which is down the hill, or will they move left up the hill? Well, if you're just thinking about it logically, they're gonna diffuse from an area of high concentration to low concentration, okay? So in this case, they would move to the right, which is down the hill. Let's pick another example. Let's say I've got where this, um, maybe right here where this uh, blue ball is, right? So right here, so relative to the low point right here, okay? Which one has a higher concentration? Well, obviously the one with the blue point, right? This has much higher concentration up here, okay? So, has higher concentration than here, so diffusion occurs from an area of high concentration to low concentration, so the diffusion is gonna to occur to the left. Net flux is to the left or down the hill. In fact, you can, Pick any two points on here for the most part, and you'll find that if you imagine this as kind of a hill, in physical terms that we are used to dealing with, the ball, so to speak, always rolls down the hill to equilibrium. It always rolls down the hill to equilibrium. So let's actually go into these examples now. Let's talk about the green ball, this point right here. If I were to say, where does net diffusion occur uh, here, left or right? Well it's on a negative slope and we say the ball, so to speak, always goes down the hill, so flux should be to the right, right? Why is that? Well, remember the concentration gradient, dc, dx, the slope of the line, that's, like I said, the concentration gradient, the slope is negative here at the green point. Well, it's negative. Going back to this expression, we have a negative uh, concentration gradient times a positive number times another negative so the flux will be positive, and flux, which is positive, positive is the rightwards direction, so if we have a negative slope, diffusion on this curve is to the right. Okay, let's talk about the blue point. So what's the concentration gradient here? It's positive, right? It's positive. So if we have a positive concentration gradient, we multiply by a, times a positive number times a negative, so the flux is negative and the negative direction for flux is to the left, right? Negative is left, positive is right, but this is negative, so the blue point has net flux to the left, okay? What about the, the red point? 
Well, again here, we're on a positive slope, right? So if we have a positive slope, it's a positive concentration gradient, okay? So positive slope times a positive diffusion coefficient times a negative number. We have a negative flux, which negative is the left direction, so flux occurs to the left, all right? Now here's a trick question. What about this purple point, okay? What about this point? What's the slope here? It's zero. Right on top of the point, the slope is zero. Okay, you might not be able to see it because I have this here, but let's just look at this right here. You could see that pretty easily at the top of that peak, the slope is zero. So what's the flux at that point? Well, if you just plug zero in here, there's no flux. Why is that? Because it's at equilibrium. Okay, you're at equilibrium at this purple point, so the slope is zero. There's no net concentration gradient, so there's no diffusion, there's no flux. Okay. So hopefully this gives you a good uh, a graphical illustration of Fick's first law of diffusion and how you can use this graph to determine the direction of net flux. Um, in fact, if you actually were given somehow a function for concentration relative to position, if you actually took its derivative and evaluated it at a certain position x, you could determine the sign of it and determine the direction of net flux, okay? But this is how you do it graphically. In the next video, we're actually gonna do another example where we actually determine the slope, or at least estimate it mathematically. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.